chest stress uh, today we're going to be talking about the uh, rental property calculator okay so if you're an investor or even a homeowner you want to know but mostly for investors if you want to know your cash on cash return on investment which is ROI or your total return on investment ROI uh, this is a pretty good calculator for that uh, so first let's start off with <coughs> the price so although some areas now you know two hundred thousand dollar houses are going for four hundred thousand you know we are in a seller's market as of uh, 2021 each month it seems like the uh, single-family homes are going up another another uh, s you know seven plus percent overall you know 12 to 17 or more percentage maybe even in the 20s percentage wise as not uncommon in some places in some areas to see within a one or two year period uh, within 2021 homes that were selling for in the 200s range between 200 and 250,000 are now selling for like 300,000 plus so anyway these calculators are really good to uh, you know on different information that you may need to know to make a good decision uh, like they say math doesn't lie so pay attention to the math okay so we got the price and then I like this calculator because you could go up or down 10,000 or or they have like actually I just put it this way that on the left side you can go down and on the ups I mean right side you can go up and uh, that includes like your down payment uh, percentage your interest rate percentage etc and uh, or you could just plug it in manually to get to play around with different numbers. Okay. So let's say the medium USA price for a single family home say three or four bedrooms two and a half baths uh, anything from I would say two thousand to three thousand square footage okay so let's put three hundred thousand alright five that's six zeros or five zeros there Okay, that's way too much. Go back one. Yep, that's three hundred thousand. Five zeros after the three. All right, say you do the typical twenty percent down down payment. Then over to the left, underneath down payment, it'll say 60,000. All right, and then say you got a pretty good FICO score or credit score. Um, most lenders use the FICO instead of the uh, Advantage, even though Advantage is a competing system with FICO. They're both pretty decent. Um, but we're going to go with FICO 
because that's what lenders typically use to decide what your interest rate will be and that in turn will decide how much your payment will be so let's say three hundred thousand and you got a pretty decent rate at at 3.125 percentage okay so uh, let's say you get three and a half closing costs Closing costs on a three hundred thousand dollar house. I'm going to say let's do eight percent. Let's go with five percent. Okay, so five percent is fifteen thousand. No rehab costs, so I'll say it's a pretty new home. No, no rehab costs or new build. So monthly rental. Say your monthly rental is is two thousand. Twenty-five, and I put the, the term for thirty years. That says your principal and interest is your principal interest on three point five percent. Um, Principal interest of two hundred forty thousand after you subtract your down payment of sixty. Thirty years will be one thousand seventy seven dollars. Okay. And then say you got say you got uh So you got property taxes so say you're in a high property tax county of a no income state so let's say you got 300,000 so 300,000 times Two point three percent, so sixty nine, so sixty nine hundred. Japan, 
year. Oh no, so you're gonna go monthly year. So insurance said another two percent. Nothing, let's put nothing for miscellaneous expenditures. I'll leave that at eight. Property management is typically ten percent. Most states charge property managers charge ten percent, which is pretty cheap considering all the stuff that you would have to put up with otherwise or have to do otherwise but I highly recommend you know semi actively managing your properties through your property manager instead of letting your property manager just do everything and I think it's good to work with your have a good relationship with your property manager that way you're both working together to uh, ensure the tenants are taken good care of and the property is taken good care of and therefore it's a win-win 
Status by tenant on time payments. On time rent payments. So 202 will be the amount you get from the uh, gross rent above. Vacancy to put at 5%, so it's $101. I didn't include uh, R&M or maintenance in this scenario and and there will be miscellaneous that pop up now and then uh, but however I left it empty this time around so this could be a bad deal depending on what you're looking for um, there's no cash flow or return on investment it's all negative and also depend on your time horizon and timeline and uh, and over here a net income of four hundred and twenty dollars a month which leads to five thousand forty dollars a year so And the principal pay down three hundred and seventy seven dollars a month or around a little over five thousand per year. So if you feel like okay, this property in two years and there's nobody having a crystal ball but if do your indicators and your research you feel that the area and the community um, and the houses will go up hundred thousand so therefore you know on paper because you haven't sold or cashed out or did anything with the uh, equity uh, or the appreciation um, on paper it looks like hey you know it's great you know you have a hundred thousand dollars in equity for not doing much but just holding on to the property you didn't do any flips or create a job for yourself or and others so you, you pretty much just uh, created money out of thin air due to inflation etc Plus, you got the principal pay down, tax, tax uh, deductions and write-offs, um, and so many other benefits to uh, owning single-family rentals. But in this scenario, we're going to see how we can change this to get some type of return on investment. Say, say you're looking for like 10% on your return on your investment. Let's see if we increase the rents. Okay. Still got a negative cash flow. Uh, reduce the interest rate. 2.5. Not much. Still got a negative cash flow. So let's see the rents. So to get it back on cash flow, 1.2%. The total return is 8.4. But for your monthly cash flow, 1.2. Overall, total cash flow is 8.4%. And, uh... How do you get your debt income? 
and your principal pay down which is probably around over five thousand dollars a year so like I said it all it all depends on what your goal your time run is but like you get a total return of eight percent or close to eight and a half percent the cash on cash in this scenario doesn't look too good and you definitely would have to be in an area where you would definitely have to that you can get to 20 that you know you can get to twenty five hundred dollars or you anticipate a year two three four or five down the road that the uh, you'll be able to increase rents from say you have it at twenty one hundred or two thousand to twenty five hundred so and what value you can add to the house or to the single family house that if uh, for your tenants to be willing to stay and pay more Okay.